Welcome back and thanks for joining us. If you're new to our channel, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified of each new video. In the last video, we visited Langevin Forêt and Rona to stock up on bulky items for our build. We needed to get that out of the way now that we have a winter workshop for the van. In this video, we insulate our van with Thinsulate. We detail what it costs us for the Thinsulate and where we got it as well as what tools you need. So guys, trust us when we say this, this is the easiest way to put it back. Yeah, we're trained professionals. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we missed last words. Don't let us convince you otherwise, we are not trained professionals. Hey guys, this is Dory and I'm Mena. We travel with our lovely dog Fiona to help you discover the most beautiful spots and to share with you what it's like to live as a nomad. So subscribe and welcome to our channel. Hey, good morning guys. Sunday and today we're gonna go see the van. We're gonna go work on her a little bit. All right, today's video, we're gonna be talking about installing Tinsulate. We chose to use Tinsulate for a few reasons. First, the material is inorganic and hydrophobic. That means any water that gets into the body of the van will drain behind the Tinsulate. Second reason, it's flame resistant. It will not burn, but it will melt. Third reason, it's a really good sound deadening. Fourth reason, it's not toxic and easy to work with. And fifth reason, and final one, it has a very good R value, 3.2. The very first thing you want to do is unroll your tinsulate. It will take a few minutes before it expands a couple of inches. We're starting by removing the side foam blocks. The purpose of those blocks is to protect the airbags. Only two pins and they're out. So Mana was able to take it out. And yep, here's the airbags. We were afraid of removing these things. Anything that has to do with airbags, it's a little scary. Because if these things come out, it's very expensive to put them back in. So now we're prepping the van because we're going to be putting insulation and we're going to be putting glue on the ceiling. And yeah, we don't want the residue or fumes or glue to go in the seats or in the cabin. The main tools you're going to need for this installation is a trim removal kit, 3M90 adhesive, and a good cutter. The installation is very straightforward. However, it's very time consuming. We started it on the ceiling. Simple, measure the panels that you need, cut the tinsulate, spray the glue on the van and on the tinsulate. Allow about 30 seconds before gluing the tinsulate to the van. If you're like us and have done your wiring, make sure the tinsulate goes underneath the wires. Cut one panel at a time. Repeat the process until you're done with the ceiling. One thing I would like to mention, once the tinsulate is glued onto the van, it's very difficult to remove it. Now that the ceiling is finished, we're starting the side walls. Always easier to work with the large surfaces, and then you work with the cavities. Remove the back door panel with your trim removal tool. It is very easy. 
Once removed, you will find a clear film. Don't destroy it. Pull it down because we're going to be using that film again once the cavities are filled. There's no need to completely remove it. Just clear enough space so you could insert the tinselates. Yeah, so you see that's the uh, rust proofing. All the yellow grease stuff. So this one is done. I kind of just used this big piece here and shimmied it up because it goes all the way there. We do the same thing on this side. See, you don't need to be a dentist to close cavities. <laughs> now that we're done, we put the film and the panel back. And now that we're done, we move on to door number two. Same steps. However, this door has no film. Not sure why. Hmm. Maybe because there's less wires over here that they didn't put, or... Yeah, it's not. Yeah. I thought maybe the guys who did the grease would have forgotten, but you yeah, don't... You can see it's, there's never, there was never one there. Yeah, they didn't put one there. Interesting. Leave it to Ford, quality control. Now that we're done with the back doors, we're going to go inside and try to fill up those cavities. So, I forgot that we brought this. So guys, this is a, a cutting mat and a rotary cutter for fabric. So I brought it exactly for this reason and I completely forgot until my lovely husband reminded me. This is going to save you so much time. If you don't have it, well, a good pair of scissors will be fine, but make sure it's a really sharp pair of scissors. So measure the length and the height that you need, cut it, roll it up like a cigar, insert through the cavities all the way down. Once the top is properly installed, roll it down and start making the cuts as you need it so it fits right in every rib if you have wires exposed make sure the tinselate goes underneath so instead of cutting one piece two piece three pieces and so on we measured from this rib all the way down from here down then we rolled up the tinselate and put one layer on top. Now that we know, then we're just gonna make cuts and put it down, right? Scissors. Give you guys a nice look. I think seems nice and tucked in. That one I cut the whole piece and then I glued it. Okay. And well, that's here. This, yeah. So then we just cut one line here, another line through. So one then, here, one here. Then we rolled it up and then stuck it in the cavity because over here I just cut it straight across and then I put that piece back in there, but it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So 
The less cuts we do, the better it is. And the less time it takes. Yep. So, yeah, so this worked out really well. Once the tinselate is properly installed, it's time to glue it. Lift it from the top, spray it, and do the same thing at the bottom. We use the same technique for most of the cavities. Some cavities are a little smaller, so you have to cut smaller pieces. And now it's time to work on the sliding door. Once the panel is removed, you'll find again the film. Remove the film, put the tinselate behind the film and the wires and close it back up again. When you're done installing the tinselate on the sliding door, make sure the door mechanism is working properly before closing everything up. Now we are removing the electrical panel that was previously installed for our solar. We have to put tinselate behind it. Again, all the tinselate goes behind the wires. Hey guys, not sure if you could see me because it's getting dark in here, but we're pretty much done for the day. However, we're not done with the job. I'd say we're finished at 75%, 80%. We did all the top parts, ceiling, roof, this one too. The only thing that we're missing is the bottom. So we did that one, but it's not glued on. This guy, not yet. This one is done, but it's not glued on. And then we're gonna tackle the liner over here, the headliner. So it was about a six hour job today. And I figure maybe an extra two hours, top three were done. So it's time to close shop. And we go, even though we are in the um, shop, it's still cold because there's no heater yet, but definitely better than being outside. So hopefully next time we come, there's gonna be a little bit more heat or we plan for a heat source. We'll see. Hey, good morning guys. So today, December 19, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, we're about to start our day. Oh, we have another, a new addition to our shop. We got heat. We got heat. Propane heat. All right, first task of the day. We want to remove the headliner before we start gluing everything because we don't want to get this dirty. So we want to remove it so we could insulate it. And also maybe we're going to put some kill mats. To start, we have to remove these four bolts, two on each side. And they are different sizes. One is longer, one is shorter. Now you have to remove the visors. There's a little clip you have to pop out and then only one screw. Oh, okay. You kind of just have to shimmy it out. Now we have to remove these four snaps so you could access them from on top. It's right there, so you have to. Okay, I see it. Grab the tool and push in that plastic piece so that it'll pop it out. Oh, that was easier than I thought it was going to be. Nice. Uh, I was trying not to bend this plastic here. It's a little bit bent, but once it's all together, you're not really going to see that that little. Yeah, and it popped right out. Yeah. So 
this was upside down and this was upside down and we had to like really shimmy these tools in here so that we could see it so that we could put, put pressure push this part so it pops out yeah so the two outer ones are the easier ones to do um, first and then we're gonna work on the other ones because as you can see they're right here which is like back back over here so it's a little bit trickier so you always want to start with the outside ones well i kind of do it's just a little tricky you guys see it if you hold the camera okay. or the phone I think. nice good job all right so we were able to uh take it out it took us what 20 minutes to get this these inside ones out so I can, only... you gotta fish it out so honestly it's not easy yeah so your trim tools are your friends and uh we couldn't get the other one but it was more of a left hand person's job this because we're right handed it was a little bit easier but still tricky so now we're gonna try the other side okay we took it out we took it out so it's only holding with this little thing here and we're trying to figure it out either if we're going to unbolt it but according to far out ride all we have to do is push this part forward because you have these little clips and if you push them forward then this should lower by a couple inches because um None of the videos, so we saw two videos about how to remove the headliner and the headliners were already removed. So we don't know how they actually went ahead and unbolted that bolt that was there. So let's try this. This one, it's not this one, it is. So now we're working on this to remove it. Got it? Yeah. Nice. All right, so this is the space that we have to work with. Yeah, and we did not find a solution for removing that bolt there. So probably unnecessary to remove the clips, but I mean, maybe it's helpful. Maybe it, it's what gives us that extra inch in here. Yeah. All right, so let's see what we could do with the kill mat and... Uh, well, kill mat? Do you think it's gonna fit? Yeah, it's just gonna be hard to roll. I didn't think this was gonna happen, but <laughs> I'm happy. It's happening. We gotta make another video about the kill mat. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Now it's time to put the tinselate on top of the headliner. Same process. Measure, cut what you need, roll it up, and then glue it. So guys, trust us when we say this, this is the easiest way to put it back. Yeah, we're trained professionals. last words okay we got to put something there so we don't lose it like we lost that one. Oh no what i really lost it i can't even see it oh yeah oh i saw it fall down that way oh i see it i see it it's over there see see it's over there well learn from our mistake guys if you're gonna pop these out put a little net but this does not happen again. You'll find it. Stop wasting time. All right, let's try and do this the smart way this time. Okay, got it. This is the best way to do this. Remove these with your trim tools, put it in here, and then pop it back up. Otherwise, you're gonna have a heck of a time sliding it back in like you did sliding it out. So now we could just pop these back in. And that saved us a whole whack of time. Yep. Gonna pop these back up there okay on either side and now we're putting everything back together so one thing that i would just realized as well is they're not all the same and look there's an angle here so you have to figure out where that angle goes so this angled part the angled part goes towards the windshield so down like that so the, the thickest part of this angled part points toward the windshield. I'll show you right now how that goes. Bloop. It's 
So we're just missing this part right here. And then we have to apply glue on this side. And of course, this side as well. And then, yeah, and then it's done. Hey guys, so the tinselate is done. Super happy, it took us two days. Uh, we bought two big rolls. It was about a thousand dollars Canadian uh, for the rolls and uh, it took us nine to 10 hours. We got four packs like this. One thing to keep in mind, if the bottles are cold, they won't work. They need to be room temperatured. Our cutting tools, we had this lovely tool. It's a rotary cutter. Honestly, this thing was awesome. Uh, so easy to cut, nice straight lines. We did buy a couple of blades. We ended up using two blades, so make sure you have a few of them because the tinselate is pretty thick and it will damage your blades. This is a craft kit. So if you have a crafter in your family, I'll show you exactly what it is. My sister gifted this to me. So this or quilting. So you have the ruler, you have the mat, and you have the rotary cutter. What doesn't come included is the extra blades. So you want to go on Amazon and get a bunch of those. I think we got 10 for like, I don't know, 15, 20 dollars for the extra blades. So that worked out really well. Really great tool, made it super easy. So yeah, guys, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, hit like. If you have a question, feel free to drop it on the comments below.